It's an Ask a Music Snob video. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram and keep an eye out for my stories if you wanna submit questions to these videos. And I definitely didn't do this because I didn't have enough time to make the other three videos that I'm working on right now. Have you seen Steve Vai's new guitar technique? If so, what do you think? Just on the surface, I think it's pretty cool. It's obviously very difficult to do. For those not familiar, it's basically just an extension of blues double stop bends. He did what Steve Vai does and made it far more difficult than anyone would have really thought to make it. And he extended its use outside of the narrow banded pentatonic type of shapes and sounds. Tyler of Music is Wind does an excellent breakdown of this. I'll be a link to his video down below. The sound of it and the idea of it, I think are very cool. However, just based upon what I heard from both Steve and Tyler, it sounds very Vi-ish, if that makes any sense. It still has a lot of Steve Vi's voice in the way that it's executed. I don't see many guitar players taking the time to learn that level of finger interdependence and strength in the bends and also holding other notes in a chord while you're doing it in order to accomplish such a specific sound, especially considering that I feel like Steve Vai's phrasing is very much a love it or hating type of thing. I happen to love it. And you can accomplish the same melodic and harmonic movements through various forms of legato with, with more ease for one, and also not having to have that long bendy sound. I think incorporating a faster bend speed would make this sound less wonky, if that makes any sense. But it would also make the end result of this less significant and you'd still have to practice very hard to get there. So it's kind of difficult to say um, what the end result of this will be other than just being like, hey, look what I can do. However, I know for sure this is just a proto technique and this is just how Steve Vai is applying this specific technique of bend interdependence, which is really difficult to do. And I think if there were a bunch of other guitar players from other guitar disciplines who learned that interdependence, but worked it into their specific voice of playing, I think that's where we could actually start to see some really interesting developments from it, actually. I think there's potential to open up a whole new world of shred creativity. And actually, one of my favorite online guitar players, Achika Nito, I challenge you to being able to learn this technique and apply it to your tapping style. I think it'd be way cooler and have, frankly, a lot better application since his tapping style isn't just two hand tapping like this all the time. He sometimes holds chords in his fretting hand and taps with his picking hand. He could do these weird bends with his chordal shapes in his fretting hand and basically remap the fretboard for himself, let alone adding these really cool long bend or short bend glissandos into his melodic lines that are going in and out of his harmonies that are moving. I think that could be really cool for him to incorporate. And that's just me thinking about it. That guy is so stupidly creative. I would be very interested to see what he actually does with it. How crucial is production to your enjoyment of music? Uh, simply put, very. Half of the battle in music is timbre and production is one of the primary ways in which we mold and shape timbre in order to be properly communicated through the stereo system that we've been working with for generations now in order for that to properly get across to your audience. Now, that doesn't mean that the production needs to be perfect or exactly the way I want to hear it for me to like it. I enjoy mixes across multiple different disciplines and you can pretty much poke holes in just about any mix. I prefer to have a more modern mix with more punch and thump and the low end and bright and clear high end because I typically listen on digital formats. In the right circumstances, particularly if it's a really good preamp with a great turntable in front of it through a good speaker system, I can thoroughly enjoy some analog production. I guess the larger point is, yes, production very much matters to me, but as long as it's not radically gross, that doesn't mean that I can't enjoy it. How do I stop listening to the same music over and over? Well, it depends on what you mean by that. If you're listening to the same song or same small group of songs over and over, I mean, I do that from time to time. I'll have spells for just hours at a time. I will just listen to the same song over and over again because it's just feeding this groove just absolutely milking this mood. I don't think that that's inherently a bad thing per se. I am very much of the mind that music is a lot like a drug. It can be used medicinally, it can be indulged in, it can be overindulged in and abused, but that's really up to you to determine 
how much you're abusing it and how much you're keeping yourself narrow-minded for a specific reason or not. If you're talking about the same genre of music all the time, again, that's not inherently a bad thing. If you're really interested in a specific sphere of music and you want to really enjoy it and lean into it, I mean, great. There's a difference between being an elitist and someone who just has a narrow frame of reference of what they like or what they enjoy or what they care to enjoy. So I guess the better question is why do you want to listen to other types of music? It's obviously to expand your frame of reference since that's implicit in the action. So I guess the even more specific question is why do you want to expand your musical frame of reference? If it's to improve as a musician, I would say start learning songs that are in genres you don't listen to. Learn them correctly with the correct technique and the correct notes. Learning how to play a song no matter what genre it's in can give you a new appreciation for a song in a completely new way. A great example of this for me is Rock the Casbah by The Clash. I never really cared that much for this song. It has a decent chorus. But once I actually learned the song on bass guitar, I was like, wow, okay, that was a lot more difficult than I anticipated. And there's actually some really cool writing in this. And for whatever reason you may have for wanting to expand your musical frame of reference, joining us on the Song Suggestion Friday live streams on Saturday and Friday, weirdly enough, we listen to so many different kinds of music, a butt ton of it all at once and it starts somewhere between 1.30 and 2 o'clock central time. We have a community of people that aren't afraid to share their opinions and aren't afraid to have their musical tastes far over scrutinized by an asshole like me. But first and foremost, we have a hell of a lot of fun on there and we have all, including me for sure, have discovered a ton of awesome music through the live stream. So I definitely recommend showing up. Have you always considered being a musician? I don't know if always is the right word, but I knew since I was 15 years old that being in music or being a musician is what I wanted to do. As I understand it, it is very rare for people at that age to know what they want to do with their lives. I can tell you that when I was younger, I wanted to go into the military or maybe something to do with programming. But for most of my adolescent and adult life, I have known that I wanted to be a musician. Who's my favorite bassist besides my bass player, Steve? Um, that's difficult to pick one, so I'll split it out into a couple of favorites of mine. As far as tone goes, Martin Mendez of Opeth. It's not really a special tone in the way that it's like pushing boundaries or is super identifiable. It's a pretty quote unquote basic tone. I would even potentially lovingly call it low key. But its ability to complement a variety of different timbre palettes, genres, is really astonishing to me. And it always has this beautiful, warm depth to it that I just, I have not found a bass tone that I love more than that. For phrasing and style, Victor Wooten, the man is a genius on the bass as far as I'm concerned. His ability to intuit and speak with his instrument no matter the situation is just, it's unsurpassed in my opinion. If you haven't read his book, The Music Lesson, you absolutely need to. For speed and agility, I would give it to Billy Sheehan. His ability to play ridiculously fast with very difficult techniques and phrasing that goes all around the fretboard and still have a very present, very deep, very round and pure and um, well pronounced bass tone. The dude is just incredibly talented. If you had the choice of touring with any band, who would it be? Well, since I am not the only one in my band, it's not just up to me. So I asked my other bandmates what their answers would be. If I were to be able to pick any band that I could tour with, it would be Flying Colors. You have Neil Morse, Steve Morse, Mike Portnoy, Dave LaRue, and Casey McPherson, all of whom probably between them have over 150 years of musical and touring experience. They've seen everything through the industry. The amount of knowledge that would be there to be able to gather to make your own experience better and also pass on to others would be absolutely invaluable. If I could tour with any band of my choosing, it would definitely be Leprous. Uh, they're my favorite band right now, and I would love the opportunity to get to learn from them and you know share the road with them, get to know them, and um, just the opportunity to, to hear them perform every night would be amazing. If I could tour with any band in the world, it would undoubtedly be Dream Theater. Not only are they my biggest, uh, my personal, my biggest influence musically, um, just being able to share a stage with my, my musical heroes, 
would push my energy and my performance to the next level each night for sure. I would absolutely tour with all of these bands and I love them all for different reasons. I would also love to tour with Opeth. Opeth are super cool, their audience is super cool. We would learn a lot. And I know for sure that our sounds would complement each other very well. Am I planning on making any lessons? Yes, I am still working on a masterclass for y'all focused on songwriting. It'll be from my personal perspective, which is specific to what I'm specialized in, which is just being me. So that makes it difficult to sell since that's very niche. <laughs> but I think there's a lot of young players out there who'll be able to find some very valuable information from it. So keep your eyes out. All right, that'll do it for me this week. There was actually a number of really good questions. I may keep those and add those into another video later. And I wanted to take more time to give better, more well thought out and constructed answers on these than I had in the past. So that's why I only got to seven questions as opposed to I used to be able to get through like 10 or 14. But yeah, go ahead, follow me on Instagram. Keep an eye out for my stories. There'll be question stickers up there. If you like this video, if you like what I do on this channel, hit the like button, subscribe, that'd be awesome. Support me on Subscribestar. It's the only way I can keep making badass content for you. And again, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Become the Knight. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Rock on.